Hey everybody, welcome to the Dollar Vigilante and also a Ninercast. We're going to put this on both channels. It's a very important episode that we're going to have Roger Veer on, the Bitcoin Jesus. Uh, we've had him on before to talk about Bitcoin. He's our, our go-to guy when it's anything to do with Bitcoin. And it's been a very interesting week in Bitcoin. And, and for people, uh, for Dollar Vigilante subscribers, you'll be seeing this video first before we put it live. Uh, so we have Roger Veer coming in from St. Kitts, uh, where he's actually a citizen. He uh, renounced his U.S. citizenship. And this week has been a very interesting week in Bitcoin, Roger, with Mike Hearn, one of the Bitcoin developers, uh, saying that this is the resolution of the Bitcoin experiment, so essentially saying Bitcoin is dead. Uh, why don't you let us know what you think of that? Well, I like Mike. Mike is a really, really smart guy, but he's wrong. And he's wrong like everybody else who's ever said that Bitcoin is dead and Bitcoin is doomed and this is the end of Bitcoin. Every single person that said that so far has been wrong, and, and Mike's wrong as well when he said that. Yeah, we, I, we've we've been around Bitcoin for years, and I've I think this is about the 89th time I've heard Bitcoin is dead. Uh, if you think Bitcoin is dead, anyone watching, uh, please, uh, we have a Bitcoin address below. Just send me your Bitcoins since it's dead. You're not using them anymore. Uh, but he did uh, quite uh, cause quite a stir in the Bitcoin market. I don't know if it was all related to him, but it certainly looked like it. Bitcoin was trading around $450, and uh, after he put out his article two days ago, it uh, it's it hit around three hundred. $70 where it is now. So that's quite a drop. Uh, what's your take on what happened? Um, I, my, my take as far as investment advice, I think this is another buying opportunity. I actually had some uh, extra dollars sitting around from a real estate transaction that just finalized. And I literally wired them to a Bitcoin exchange on, uh, on Friday to buy more Bitcoins with that money. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of pleased about the timing. But if you look at what's going on, yeah, Bitcoin's having some, some problems or some issues or some infighting right now. But they're the absolute best type of problems you could possibly hope to have. The problems are being caused by so many people around the world wanting to use Bitcoin and starting to use Bitcoin that it's getting a little bit crowded with the, the current block size. So everybody's arguing about what the right way is to increase the block size in order to accommodate additional users. And it actually looks like there's a, a convergence on an agreement between the largest wallets and the largest mining operators and uh, you know the largest payment processors are all coming together around uh, increasing the Bitcoin block size from one megabyte every 10 minutes to two megabytes every 10 minutes, which will instantly double the amount of people around the world that can use Bitcoin. And uh, it's looking even faster than I had hoped, actually, since all this blew up with uh, Mike Hearn a couple of days ago. It looks like uh, in the coming week, like it's pretty much going to be a, a solid path forward that that's going to happen. And what's going to happen after that? You know, everyone's still going to argue about that online for months and years to come. But uh, in the short term, it looks pretty clear that people have centered uh, around a two megabyte uh, block size for the Bitcoin blockchain. And I think that's a great thing. And it instantly doubles the amount of people that can use Bitcoin. So that's great for everybody involved. Yeah, that has been the issue over the last few months. Uh, there was a Bitcoin dropped a little bit a few months ago when there was uh, seemed to be a bit of a disagreement on what the block uh, size should be. And as that's interesting that Mike Hearn put this out saying that's one of the main reasons that he thinks Bitcoin is dead is because of this block uh, size debate. Uh, and two days later, you're saying that it's almost been resolved. So that's interesting. He also had a few other, uh, and we should also mention, as you mentioned, it's quite funny that the reason he's saying Bitcoin is dead is because because it's become so popular that the system can barely keep up anymore. So they're going to have to make changes to the system. Uh, he also made some other comments. That I'd like to get some uh, comments from you on uh, he, uh, one comment he had that I actually didn't even really look into this. It was a very busy week for me with the markets crashing, uh, but I did see this come out and I just skimmed it. And he said uh, one of the reasons that uh, uh, if it, well, I'll, I'll say exactly what he said. He said, think about it. If you had never heard about Bitcoin before, would you care about a payment network that had wildly unpredictable fees that were high and rising fast? What does he mean by that? So a few months ago or a year ago to send a Bitcoin transaction, it was basically free or maybe a penny or two. Now it's four cents per transaction uh, about <laughs> at the current moment. So it's still much, much, much cheaper than PayPal or bank wire transfers. Speaking of that, actually... To send my wire transfer to the Bitcoin exchange to buy more Bitcoins, the bank charged me $50, and then the receiving bank deducted another $30. So it cost $80 to send dollars to the Bitcoin exchange to buy more Bitcoins. And if I could have done it with Bitcoin, if I had had the Bitcoins already to do that, it would have cost four cents. So uh, I think that's a bit of a hyperbole on his part to call four cents a transaction, you know, high, high price and quickly rising and this and that. Uh, it's still cheaper than anything else. And, uh, I think there's going to be a, a bit of downward pressure on that price, I think, as soon as the Bitcoin block uh, 
size rises to two megabytes. And I think two megabytes is just the first step. Mike Hearn's a little bit upset because initially he was pushing for, for 20 megabytes and then eight megabytes. And then now everybody's negotiated down to two megabytes. But I think two megabytes is just a step. And, uh, you know, the average web page today, that when you, every single web page you look at, the average size is more than two megabytes today. So two megabytes is, is nothing. I'm sure the network will have no problem with that. And uh, it's, it, I don't see it as an issue. So. so going from one or two cents to four cents is wildly unpredictable fees and high and rising fast. So this seems like a, quite a bit of uh, 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 specula- uh, not speculation, but he's, he's really blowing a lot of these things out of proportion here. Now, just for, for us to understand and myself as well, where does the, that four cents go? It goes to the Bitcoin miners that are securing the Bitcoin network. Uh, so, and okay. I guess one other thing that we should point out, and again, Mike is a super smart guy. I like Mike, but uh, recently he started working for a group of banks that are, have hired him to build a non-Bitcoin-based blockchain. So it's kind of interesting that now that he's working for a bunch of banks, he's uh, a bit down on Bitcoin and the Bitcoin blockchain. So, but uh, Yeah, that is uh, very interesting. Uh, obviously, p- potential ulterior motives for putting something like this out. Of course, uh, a lot of people who don't like Bitcoin and definitely those who do under, don't understand Bitcoin jumped all over it to once again declare Bitcoin dead. But what really appears to have happened here is that a uh, Bitcoin developer has moved on and he's gone to the dark side. He's gone to work with the banks. And now he's saying Bitcoin's dead because of some problems, which Bitcoin always has. And get, keep in mind, too, the banks are the ones that has the, they have the most to lose if Bitcoin becomes popular. And the banks charged me $80 to move money from one bank account to another bank account. Like, that's crazy. With Bitcoin, you can do it for free or may- maybe four cents at the high end. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, it's quite amazing, though, isn't it, how even just an article like this can cause such a uh, price swing in the price of Bitcoin. And I have to tell you that I'm uh, pleased as well as you because I also I had been wanting to buy more Bitcoin and it rose to 450 so fast. I've been waiting. I was hoping for a pullback. So this was a little bit of a uh, a blessing disguise for me, too. So I guess we have to thank Mike for that. <laughs> Uh, is there any real concerns, though? Uh, this is the question. Uh, do you see any um, real concerns for the future of Bitcoin in the short term uh, with things like the block size and things like that? And maybe you could also sort of explain how these things work on a technical level, because it is very confusing. Even for myself, I don't understand how these changes exactly get made. So maybe you could say for the for the move from if they move from one megabit to two megabit b- uh, block, uh, how is that decided exactly? What is, what is the technical way that happens? Yeah, there's there's not necessarily the, the clearest answer to that. So everybody kind of has to agree in in unison, uh, and that's why there's been fighting and arguing over over this for months and months and months on the internet. And then it spilled out into the New York Times a, a couple of days ago there with Mike Hearn's article. But uh, maybe I, I can summarize the arguments on both sides as best I understand them. And, and basically. One of the things that makes Bitcoin so incredibly useful is that it can't be censored, it can't be shut down, it can't be controlled. And the reason that's the case is because there's these tens of thousands of computers across the planet that have a copy of the entire Bitcoin ledger, which is called the blockchain. And that ledger today is around 50 gigabytes. So the computer that I'm talking to you on right now has an entire copy of that ledger. And that ledger is growing at the rate of about one megabyte every 10 minutes. And inside of that one megabyte, you're including all the Bitcoin transactions that happened since the previous block. And so inside of one megabyte, there's only so much data and information that can fit. And what's happened with Bitcoin over the last couple of years is that so many people have started using Bitcoin, that there's so many transactions every 10 minutes that it's getting right up to the point where they can't quite all fit in this one megabyte block every 10 minutes. So the solution that people are congregating around at the moment is to increase that block size to two megabytes every minute, uh, which I think is a great thing and will allow twice as many people to use Bitcoin as are using it today. Um, There are other really, really smart people that are working on other technologies that will allow even more transactions to fit inside of each one megabyte block or in each two megabyte block, if that's what we switch to, without having to actually increase the size. And those technologies are great and interesting and useful, but they're not ready yet. Um, But the big fear that people have is that if this Bitcoin blockchain that today is 50 gigabytes, if suddenly it were to become, you know, five terabytes, 
overnight, it would be a little bit difficult to have it still on your computer. And so they're worried that the number of full nodes, those are people that are running the full Bitcoin software around the world, they're worried that that number is going to decrease to a number that's so small that governments would be able to attack all of them and shut it down. But I think they have that argument exactly backwards. So right now across the entire world, maybe there's 10 million people using Bitcoin today, maybe that's on the generous side. So, and that's with one megabyte blocks that are basically full. So if we increase the block size to two megabytes, suddenly we can have 20 million people around the world. And if we increase it to, to 10 megabytes, maybe we can have 100 million people around the world using Bitcoin without even having to use these other technologies to fit more transactions in each block. And if that's the case, if you have 100 million Bitcoin users around the world, compared to our 10 million Bitcoin users around the world we have today, uh, I think we're likely to have a whole lot more full nodes around the world running the Bitcoin software and a whole lot more businesses around the world that are running the full software, which makes Bitcoin even more secure from, from attacks from governments or anybody else. So I think the bigger the blocks and the more users people, uh, the more people around the world using Bitcoin, the more secure and the more safe it is. But the, uh, the people that disagree with me think that if the blockchain gets too big and the blocks are too big, uh, there's going to be less full nodes and it's going to make Bitcoin uh, more susceptible to attack. But I, I very clearly fall in the camp that I think bigger blocks equals more people around the world being able to use Bitcoin, which makes Bitcoin more secure and, and, and safe. So. That's very interesting. Thank you for uh, helping us understand that. Um, when I'm just reading through his article. I, didn't, I never even read the full thing. I've been so busy. Uh, but it says here that in a company, someone who did not share the goals of the organization would be dealt with in a simple way by firing him. But Bitcoin Core is an open source project, not a company. And he seems to be saying that like it's a bad thing. Uh, so my question to you is, is this Michael Hearn, is he some sort of socialist or statist? Uh, uh, he, he, does he not like the open free market? No, he has some real legitimate uh, gripes and claims here. So what's been going on is there's been one person particularly in the Bitcoin ecosystem that controls a lot of the main discussion forums where all the people that are super interested in Bitcoin are discussing things all the time. And what happened is that anybody that proposed increasing the Bitcoin block size or proposed any of the solutions to, to scaling Bitcoin that wasn't in line with this group called Bitcoin Core, which are a bunch of developers, anybody that proposed anything that was in disagreement with them uh, their their posts would be deleted. They weren't allowed to post it. It was, it was outright being uh, censored from all these forums. So uh, that's definitely a big, big problem. But uh, that's starting to be solved right now. People are migrating to forum.bitcoin.com or they're migrating to reddit slash r slash btc. Uh, and both of those forums allow free and open discussion. But uh, it's really been too bad what some of these other people involved in Bitcoin uh, have been doing as far as censoring dissenting uh, opinions, in including my own. Interesting. Uh, let me ask you about the Bitcoin Investment Trust. This is traded on the over-the-counter market in the U.S. under the ticker symbol GP GBTC. Uh, we've been following it for a while at the Dollar Vigilante. We've always mentioned that it seems to be trading at a really high valuation over the price of Bitcoin. But then after this week, what happened, it seems to have come down a lot. Uh, it came down much further than Bitcoin. So a lot of that overvaluation seems to have been wrung out of it this week. I just wanted to ask you what's your take on the GBTC for, for people who don't necessarily, for example, I'll give you one example right now. My own mother, she's about 70. Uh, she's not doing very well health-wise. Uh, but uh, I manage her portfolio. And for me to go and try to explain to her, I bought Bitcoin and it's sitting in this wallet somewhere. Just not going to happen. So, uh, But she does have a stock brokerage account. So uh, I was actually looking at buying GBTC on Friday. I missed it, so I'll probably buy it on Tuesday. But uh, what's your take on, on buying that as a way to get some exposure to the price of Bitcoin? If you're in your 70s, it's probably not uh, <laughs> not the right time horizon for you there. But if you're younger than that, I think it's uh, fantastic because you can buy it tax deferred. So you can uh, have all the capital gains. If, if Bitcoin winds up being a hit all over the world, all those capital gains are tax deferred. So that, that's a great thing. Uh, and I don't know a huge amount about what they're up to there, but uh, from what I have read about it, it seems really clear that the reason the price is diverging from the actual price of Bitcoin is because of these uh, government regulations uh, that aren't I believe if you buy the G GBTC or whatever the ticker is there, you're not allowed to sell it until after you've held it for like six months or some arbitrary amount of time, which makes it so that the price can't stay in lock with uh, the actual Bitcoin price. 
Yeah, I'm not sure on that. We've been looking. It's, it's very confusing. Uh, it's a, that's why we haven't fully recommended it outright to our subscribers is because we, it's very confusing how they've got it set up. Uh, so that's why I was asking you, but uh, you're not completely aware of it either. So we'll just leave that as it is. But I think it's really important just to mention here that this is why you should be paying attention to what's going on in Bitcoin. Uh, so many people could just be thrown off. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who might have been thinking about getting some Bitcoin and just thought it's dead now and it's in the, it's it's the, in the media a couple of times <laughs> it's the opposite yeah, it's, of dead. yeah absolutely and i think that's why it's important to subscribe to our letter we talk about bitcoin all the time uh dollar vigilante just go to dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe there's also a great product uh, to learn about bitcoin i'll put a link to that down below that's done by max wright he'll also be in Arcapoco. and of course you roger you're going to be in Arcapoco. uh so there's going to be a lot of uh, bitcoin talk there and it's just so important to get the real facts as, as usual anything sort of in the media or being reported in the media if you just listen to that you're not going to have any idea what's really going on absolutely so and i'm, I'm really excited about uh anarchopulco it's going to be an amazing event with so many amazing people coming in from all over the world so if you haven't bought your tickets yet go to anarchopulco.com and get them and you can pay in bitcoin too yeah, of course. No, we actually prefer that, of course. And uh, so it'll be great to see you here. Of course, Roger, you're uh, uh, definitely a dollar vigilante type person. Uh, you've renounced your U.S. citizenship. You're there in St. Kitts right now where you actually are a citizen. Uh, you're a Bitcoin guy. Uh, so uh, it would be great to see you here. And it's going to be a great crowd this year for Narcopoco. The day before, by the way, is a dollar vigilante internationalization and investment summit. So I don't know if you uh, get in early or not, but uh, you might. So maybe we can get you uh, involved in that. That sounds great. All right. Well, I really appreciate it. I know you're super busy. Even You couldn't even respond to me yesterday with all the uh, uh, responses you had to send out to this one article. But thank you for giving us uh, the scoop on what's really going on. Always a pleasure. Thanks so much, Jeff. All right. We'll see you next month, Roger. So that's it for the Dollar Vigilante and Anarchast. So I'll finish with both taglines. Uh, that's it for Anarchast. Peace, love, and anarchy. And the Dollar Vigilante. Stay safe out there. You have all the major central banks, Japan, UK, Europe, America, all printing staggering amounts of money. The people who are getting that money, Jeff, are very happy and their friends are very happy. I believe in 2020 that we will be back into a rip, roaring, snorting bull market. They may increase interest rates by a quarter of a percent to kind of prove to the world how responsible they are. Government is always uh, mankind's biggest enemy uh, throughout human history. It always has been. It's what destroyed Rome. It's what everything that every empire has collapsed and every war and all the billions of people have been killed. Uh, it's all due to government. So it uh, is always uh, our enemy. 